guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Taylor, and I am a full-time wedding and senior portrait photographer located in Charleston, South Carolina, and I am also an educator that is passionate about providing practical and helpful content to photographers and small business owners across the globe. And today, I'm really excited. I know I always say that, but I am talking about something that I have never talked about before. I have never provided a blog post, I've never provided a freebie, a YouTube video, or anything on this topic, and that topic is off-camera flash. Off-camera flash can be so intimidating to photographers because it feels like it's a lot of tech, it feels like there's so many things that can go wrong, and there's also so many right ways to do off-camera flash. There are so many ways to achieve the same result that it can feel overwhelming and like you're always doing it wrong, when in reality you're actually doing it right, it just doesn't have to look like the people that you know in the industry or whoever you're looking up to. And so today I'm going to talk about my super simple flash setup for wedding receptions. And in full transparency, I am by no means a flash guru. This is a super simple but effective way to set up off-camera flash. It's really not hard and I don't use any soft boxes. I use bare bulb flashes. These are the Canon 600 EXRT, the two version. There's a one and a two. I have the twos and I just use two of these on wedding days and I don't have umbrellas. I don't have soft boxes. I just use a super simple setup that gets beautiful images for my clients, but that doesn't stress me out and take me 30 minutes to set up on a wedding day. So I'm going to walk you guys through exactly what I use, how I use it, and show you some example images of how wedding day flash works for me at receptions. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is camera settings when you're using flash. Because I know that obviously we have to talk through the flash settings, but I think that something that a lot of people look over is how your camera settings actually interact with your flash settings to create really beautiful images. Because I learned the hard way that when using off-camera flash on a wedding day, if you rely solely on the flash to have a really high power to light your images and you don't supplement that with ISO and correct camera settings, then your flash batteries are going to die very quickly. They're going to stop being reliable because they're not going to fire consistently and they're just going to get really tired really quickly. So when I'm photographing a reception, my camera settings are typically somewhere um, in the aperture range of 2.5. My shutter speed is typically around 1 200th and my ISO is somewhere between 800 and 1000. And some of you may think that that's on the high end, but again, I don't want my flashes doing all of the work. I want my camera to add some light to the images as well so my flashes are a little more reliable my batteries last longer and they still fire consistently even when I'm using them for an entire reception so I use two flashes on a wedding day I use one on camera and one off camera the really cool thing about Canon 600 flashes is that they have transmitters in them already so I don't have to buy a transmitter to make the flashes talk to each other they already talk to each other because it's built in I'm gonna put a video below for how to link your 600 flashes because I don't want to have to walk through all that today um, so that I don't want to waste that time, but that'll be down below if you don't know how to link your flashes together. You want your flashes to be able to talk to each other. So I have one on my camera and then I have one off my camera. So this flash would typically be on a light stand. It would be bare bulb and it would be pointed like this. And I'm going to tell you why I do that and where it sits. But this second flash is typically on a flash stand. And first, we are going to talk about my flash settings because on a wedding day, my on-camera flash is typically set at 1 over 16-ish. It's typically uh, set that way because it's bouncing off of the ceiling or off of the walls to diffuse light in a really natural way and fill the room with light. My off-camera flash is typically a little less powerful, typically at 1 over 32 because it's acting as a fill light or a backlight to create a really pretty dramatic effect, but not necessarily to light the image effect effectively, if that makes sense. This one lights it effectively so that you can actually see what I'm photographing. This one is just more for pretty effect. I and mean, I'm going to explain more about that so that makes more sense. But here's an example. I'm going to walk you guys through three wedding day scenarios. I'm going to walk you through reception details, reception dancing, and then exits. Those are the three biggest things that I get questions about. So those are the three scenarios I'm going to walk you through. So when I am photographing reception details, I am photographing with my on-camera flash just like this. So if I'm shooting horizontally, it's pointed towards the ceiling. If I'm shooting vertically, I turn it like this so that it's still pointing at the ceiling. Um, I want this flash to act as a bounce, so it's bouncing off the ceiling or the walls to reflect light onto my subject. If the place that I'm shooting doesn't have white ceilings or white walls or it has like an orange hue or it's made of wood or something along those lines, what I will do instead is I will put this on my flash. This is called a flash bender. I'm going to link it below. Um, there is a bounce card built into your flash already and it looks like 
this. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm multiplying it by 100 in size when I'm adding this flash bender to my flash. And what that does is it bounces the light in a really soft way. It diffuses it softly onto the subject in front of me. And that way I'm not pointing it at my subject like this where it's way too bright and overexposed. I'm softly bouncing the light onto my subject by using this flash bender. So it is a game changer and a lifesaver. You just Velcro it on. Clearly I am uh, very good at it. <laughs> Um, you Velcro it on like this and you look a little bit like a crazy person walking around with it like this, but it does such a good job of diffusing light. So if I need this during the detail portion of the reception, I will use it, but ideally I find a wall or a ceiling that I can bounce light off of instead. And what I'm doing is I have my camera excuse me, I have my flash on my camera bouncing off light and my off camera flash, which is shown by the yellow dot to the left of me in this diagram is set off to the side pointing at my subject. So in this scenario, the subject is this beautiful table setup, and you can see that there's light coming in from the left side of the frame. So that flash off to the left side is acting as a filler light to light that side of the image. And it's also adding contrast because there's going to be light on one side and dark on the other, which shows the detail of things like the flowers and the chairs and the tablecloth more than if the light was just flat coming from one angle. So there's one flash off camera um, pointing at the subject from the side and then there's one on camera that is bouncing off of the ceiling or the sides of the walls. And this is the result with this beautifully lit image. And then here's another quick example, same exact concept here. My on camera flash is pointing up, bouncing off the ceiling and my off camera flash is off the frame to the left and you can see that the left side of the frame is a little bit more lit because I have that off camera flash adding contrast on purpose. Second thing I want to talk about is reception dancing. The only thing that changes for me between details and dancing is that I always have this flash bender on my camera during the dancing part of the reception. And what I do is I take that off camera flash and I put it on the opposite corner of the dance floor from where I'm working. So in this diagram, you can see that I'm working on the left hand corner of the dance floor. So I'll be covering this part of the dance floor and this part of the dance floor. So my flash is going to be on the opposing corner acting as a backlight. And you can see in this image of my sweet bride, Abby, there's light coming from the back right corner of this image because that's where my off camera flash is in the back right corner, lighting her from behind. And then my on camera flash is acting as this giant bounce card. That's reflecting light really evenly on her to fill the rest of the image with light. And then lastly, I want to talk about exits because there are so many different ways that your bride and groom may do an exit at their wedding day. They may do sparklers. They may do confetti. They may do what are those things called those ribbon ones. There's so many fun things that they can do, but I want to make sure that I have a lighting strategy that applies to any of those scenarios. So what I do is again, I break out my flash bender. And so that I know that no matter how dark it is, my camera is going to bounce light evenly on them because of this amazing white bounce card. And then I hand my off camera flash to my second photographer. So she's literally holding it and she crouches behind the couple and follows behind them with the flash. She doesn't follow closely behind them. She stays way far back so that she blends in with the other people but I have this flash pointing at the back of my couple and that way it gives them that beautifully backlit effect like the sun would at golden hour with the glow. So then when they're walking, I am lighting the front of them with my on camera flash and my bounce card and my second shooters walking behind them, giving them that backlit effect with this flash on a lower power. And then the images look something like this. You can see that their faces and their skin are really evenly lit because of that bounce card. And then you can see that there's light coming from behind them that kind of frames them with that beautiful halo um, and gives a really pretty effect to all of the guests standing behind them. So I hope that this video was helpful guys. I'm going to add a guide down below all about wedding day details and how to perfect your wedding day details. If you're a wedding photographer that's interested in learning more from me, let me know down below if you enjoyed this video, if there's anything else you want to learn about off camera flash and be sure to subscribe so that you can see all of my videos each time they go live every Monday. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you next week.